My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in Surah Ibrahim, in the middle of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us an amazing incident that is going to occur on Judgment Day. And this is an incident that our Mufassirin, and in fact some of the early scholars, they gave a very interesting title to. And the title that is found in some of the classical books of Tafsir is Khutbatu ash Shaytan, The Khutbah of Shaytan. Shaytan is going to give a khutbah, a sermon. And the sermon of Shaytan will take place on judgment day or some said right after the judgment finishes and the, they have entered Jahannam. So whether it takes place before or after Jahannam, but it's going to take place in that time frame. And it is a very profound khutbah that we need to benefit from. We need to ask ourselves, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us of the sermon of Iblis? Why does the Quran have the sermon that Iblis is going to give to his followers? And the response is obvious, that before it happens, Allah Azza wa Jal is warning us to take heed, pay attention, make sure that that khutbah benefits you before you have to hear it on Judgment Day. Benefit from it even before it takes place. Allah in His mercy told us the future. And He transcribed for us a sermon from the worst of the worst. So that we, inshaAllah ta'ala, will be protected from having to hear it directly from its source. This is an amazing wisdom in the Qur'an. And it therefore becomes necessary for all of us to pay attention to this short khutbah. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of them are going to be standing in front of Allah. فَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا The weak, the majority of mankind that are simply followers will say to the powerful, the mighty, إِنَّا كُنَّا لَكُمْ تَبَعًا We only followed you. You were the ones who told us to do all of these sins, to reject God, to do this and that. We followed you. Inna kunna lakum taba'a. Fahal antum mughnuna anna min adabillahi min shay. Can you now help us to be saved fully or partially from Allah's punishment? So the masses are going to look to their leaders. And the masses will say, Look, you were our leaders, we put you in charge. And you were the ones who told us to reject Allah, to reject the prophets, to do this and that. So now that you had the izzah in this world, can you now enjoy the izzah of this world in the next? And like we used to respect you and give you our wealth and our whatnot, now can you take our share as well, or at least a portion of our share of Allah's punishment? And of course, we all know the answer. They will say, It's not our fault. We weren't guided. If Allah didn't guide us, then you know it's not our fault. So they blame it on Allah. Even though in the end, all of mankind is equal when it comes to the intellect, when it comes to the fitra, when it comes to recognizing truth from evil. It is not an excuse if a person tells you to kill somebody, you go kill them. It's not an excuse if a person says, reject God, you reject God. Allah gave you a mind as well. But they try to get off. So they try to lay the blame on the leaders. The leaders say it's not our fault. So then who else are they going to turn to? So when the leaders and the followers don't have anybody else to blame, they turn to shaitan. This is now the khutbah of Iblis. They turn to shaitan and they blame Iblis himself. It's all your fault. You did this. If you didn't misguide us, if we didn't follow you, then all of us, the leaders and the followers, wouldn't we be where we are today. And our scholars mentioned that the people will surround Iblis and they will then be blaming Iblis. And so Iblis will stand up, يخطب, give a khutbah. That's why we get the title khutbah to Iblis here, right? And in fact, and these are all reports from the early scholars. Allah knows how authentic it is and we pray that we never have to see it ourselves. They say that a mimbar, his followers bring him a mimbar and he will stand up on a mimbar. So all of the people of Jahannam will now be listening to the khutbah of Iblis now. And he will tell them. And Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ Now when everything has been finished 
and the decrees have been passed and the people are seeing the people of Jannah go to Jannah and the people of Jahannam being dragged to Jahannam. So they're seeing the reality of all take place and they're blaming Iblis for all of this. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ Now, what lies can I say? What can I say now? إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ You had two promises. You had two versions of events. You had two paradigms in front of you. You had the promise and the version of Allah. And then you had my promise. Now you see which promise is being enacted. You see the people of Jannah going to Jannah. You see the people of Jahannam going to Jahannam. You had these two promises. You could have chosen either one of them. I didn't hide Allah's promise from you. It was there. I gave you my promise. I'm not going to deny. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ I promised you. Follow me. You shall live a long life. Follow me. You will be happy. Follow me. You will enjoy. And I promised you. And Allah also promised you the promises of Allah in the Quran. Follow me, you shall enter Jannah. Follow me and live a righteous life. Follow me. The promises were there. So the two promises were in front of you. Now you and I both see. Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'd al haqq. The promise of Allah was true. And now Iblis will say, and as for me, I lied. He'll admit, wa wa'adtukum fa akhlaftukum. I promised you, I know, I'm not going to deny. He says, I am guilty. My guilt is that I promised you and you see now that my promises were nothing but lies and the promises of Allah were true. But Iblis will then say, you are surrounding me, you're pointing your fingers at me. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُ أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't blame me, blame yourselves. Why? Why is Iblis saying, don't blame me, blame yourselves? وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I didn't have any power over you. I did not have any force to force you to disobey Allah. I did not overtake you and then you became like zombies and robots. No. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ I only had one art and the art of deception, the art of lying, the art of speaking. مَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي All that I did was I called you, told you to follow me. And Allah told you to follow him. The two promises were there. You chose to follow me. I did not force you to follow me. And in the end he will say, مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي At this stage now, both of us are ending up in Jahannam. I cannot help you, nor can you help me. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي I have nothing I can do for you. Neither can you do anything for me. What's the point of all this game blame? What's the point of blaming me? What's the point? We're all headed there. And neither can your complaining and mumbling help me. Neither can my complaining and mumbling help you. And Iblis will also say at the very end, إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَقْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ And now I cut off all ties with all of the shirk that you used to do with me. I want to make it clear that I have nothing to do with you now. And the, here it's interesting. إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَقْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ I will do kufr with your shirk. That is what he is saying. What does this mean here? I will do kufr means I will reject, I will cut off ties. With your shirk means with your worship of me. Now, did people worship Iblis? The worship that they did was to obey him. The worship that did, they did was to believe him. The worship that they did was to follow whatever Iblis wanted them to do. And that is a type of ubudiyah, that's a type of worship. In fact, the essence of worship is to follow, is to obey. Sami'na wa ata'na. And so Iblis calls their obedience to him worship. And he says, and as for me, I have nothing to do. Inni kafartu. I am myself a kafir of your shirk. Means that I don't acknowledge it. I had nothing to do with it. And I will not help you or benefit you or harm you. And I become neutral now. I cut myself off from anything to do with you. I'm going to have to now mind my own business in Jahannam. And you're going to have to mind your own. I can't help you. You cannot help me. Verily the zalimeen. Verily the sinners are now all going to face a painful torment. This is the khutbah of Iblis. This is the sermon of Iblis. And there are so many profound points in this khutbah, in this sermon. And of them is that Iblis is admitting. He is pleading guilty. 
And he is saying that in the end of the day, I did not have any authority. Oh people, you had both promises in front of you. They were there for you. It was the promise of Allah and my promise. Now you yourself see which of the two promises is true. You can see with your own eyes. The wa'd al-haq is from Allah. And my wa'd, well, okay, I lied. He will admit. But then he will say, what's the point now of admitting? What difference does it make? In the end now, you believed me. And now that I lied to you, and this is going to happen, all of this blame game is not going to help any of us. And subhanAllah, my dear brothers and sisters, it's such a profound khutbah here and so much can be said. But it reminds me of something Ibn al-Qayyim wrote in one of his books, the Shifa al-Alil. He actually has many pages on this. And he says that sometimes people say, what is the wisdom of Allah creating Iblis? Why would Allah create Iblis? Why, what is the hikmah in the creation of Iblis? And Ibn al-Qayyim then in his typical, you know, uh, academic erudite style, he said, there are many wisdoms of them and of them and of them. And pages and pages he pens in order to explain the wisdom of creating Iblis. And of what he says in his book is uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his mercy, he manifested evil in a personality, in an entity. If Allah Azza wa had willed, evil would not be in a particular entity. The fact that it is an entity, it actually makes you more conscious. It makes you more aware. You know what to fight. Fight shaitan. Inna shaitan lakum aduwun. Allah says, shaitan is your enemy. Fattakhiduhu aduwa. Take him as your enemy. And of them is the wisdom of the story of our father Adam and Iblis. There is a wisdom that our father was seduced by Iblis. That Iblis caused the downfall of our father. Anybody who harms our family, we're angry at him. Anybody who makes fun of our family, anybody who brings distress to my father, to my mother, he becomes an enemy. So when the very entity Iblis caused our downfall, how can we not hate him? How can we not despise him? There is a wisdom. Our biological father was harmed by Iblis, was kicked out of Jannah because of Iblis. How could we not have an animosity? It is Allah's wisdom that that very entity is alive right now. The same Iblis, not just his descendants, the same Iblis that did what he did, that is our enemy. And we have to be careful about taking him as a friend instead of an enemy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, of course, the story of Adam in half a dozen verses, to half a dozen times in the Quran. We need to think, why is the story of Adam mentioned so many times? The story of Iblis and the seduction of Iblis so many times? Because Allah wants us to know the reality of Iblis. He lied to our father Adam. He lied to him straight to his face and he said, Allah has told you to not eat of this tree because Allah did not want to give you everlasting life. Blatant lie. If you eat of this tree, you will live forever. Blatant lie. He lied straight to the face of Adam. And our father Adam, like us, we believed. Temporarily we believed. And he slipped like we slip when we believe uh, Iblis. And Iblis then said, well, tough luck. I promised. Allah promised you believe my promise instead of me. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the story as well of Adam and Iblis. And in the end, in one of those verses, Allah says that once shaitan was kicked out, shaitan said to Allah that, قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Ya Rabb, Iblis is saying, it's ironic, even Iblis acknowledges Allah as a Rabb, even though he seduces mankind in rejecting Allah as a Rabb. Think about that. Iblis himself acknowledges Allah as a Rabb. And Iblis makes dua to Allah, Qala Rabbi. Iblis is saying, Rabbi. And he, because he's, he's, not, he's not stupid, he's not foolish, he knows Allah created him. He's not denying that, but he wants to let others deny what he himself believes. So he said, Oh my Rabb, because of you now, of course, Iblis blames Allah because of you. لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ I will sit on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, that is your Sirat. And I will block them from entering the Sirat. ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِنِهِمْ And I'm going to attack from every angle, from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left. And you will find that most of your followers, most of your worshippers, they will not be thankful to you. And Allah Azza wa told us of this story. We were not there. 
But Allah preserved the anecdote of the beginning like He narrated to us the anecdote of the future so that we know who Iblis is. And Ibn Al-Qayyim also mentions that of the wisdoms of creating Iblis is that Iblis is a manifestation really of Allah's power in that look at the creation of Allah, all types of entities, the perfection of Allah's creation. He has the best of the best. He has the angels. He has Jibreel. He has the Malaika. He has the jinn. He has the shayateen. And he even has Iblis. And so Iblis becomes a manifestation, believe it or not, of the diversity of Allah's creation and power. And we learn that all of Allah's makhluq are equally dependent on Allah. That the makhluq can attack other makhluq, but when the makhluq has the khaliq, when the makhluq turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then no one has power over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wisdom of the creation of Iblis also manifests itself in us turning to Allah for protection because we realize that we will not be able to protect ourselves without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now one other point here as well, that what is the difference between shaitan and iblis? Well actually the term shaitan is broader. And shaitan comes from shatana, and shatana means all those who cause you to go astray. And so shaitan is any entity that causes you to go astray. Any entity that becomes a leader of evil. Any entity that becomes somebody who is invoking others to be uh, uh, away from the Sirat al-Mustaqim. And in the Quran we learn that shaitan is not just a term for the followers of Iblis from the jinn. There are also shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. Shayateen of men and shayateen of jinn. So the term shaitan can apply to both man and to ins. Of course, the majority of shayateen are jinn. Now, by the way, I said this in the previous lectures I've given, not every jinn is a shaitan. Jinn is a creation like us, and there are Muslim jinn, there are righteous jinn, there are good jinn, worshipping jinn, and there are also uh, evil jinn. And the evil jinn are called shayateen, but they're also shayateen of mankind as well. In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that towards the end of times people will come that du'atun ala abwabi jahannam they are da'is calling but not to Allah ala abwabi jahannam they're calling to jahannam and he said that shayateen fi surat al-insan they are human shayateen the hadith literally calls them these are people they are human shayateen that these are people they are of our flesh and blood but they are the equivalent of the shayateen amongst men. Now these people, they are those whose entire lives is dedicated to fitna and fasad, to build, to bringing filth and misguiding others. And we ask Allah's refuge. Now a person commits a sin, this doesn't make him a shaitan. But a person becomes the door of sin in society. A person becomes the leader of evil, inviting others to commit sins. Then that is indeed a shayateen al-ins. And there are many examples and we ask Allah's refuge and afia uh, from that. And Ibn al-Qayyim also mentions when he talks about the wisdom of shaitan, he then mentions that it is important, the wisdom of the creation of shaitan, that it is important to understand how shaitan gets to us. What are some of the tactics of shaitan? And this is a much longer khutbah, but just to briefly summarize some of the main things. Obviously, of the simple tactics of shaitan is the tactic to cause us to forget, to cause us to neglect. And this is Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah that if shaitan succeeds, we are not held accountable. If we forget something, so of the tactics of shaitan is he causes us to uh, not think about our timing of salah. We don't realize it's time to pray. That uh, we don't realize, for example, we can sometimes oversleep even though we wanted to wake up. Shaitan might help us in extending that sleep. We don't wake up at all. Anytime this happens, it is from shaitan. Once in the lifetime of the Prophet he overslept fajr. And we, uh, I mentioned in the seerah classes, it is a wisdom of Allah. If Allah had wanted to, he would never have overslept fajr. And he overslept fajr because it was the battle the day before and the army was tired. They went to sleep late at night. He stationed Bilal to wake them up for fajr and Bilal himself fell asleep and the whole army overslept fajr. Their excuse, by the way, was jihad the previous day. Their excuse was, wasn't watching a film the previous day. It was doing jihad the previous day. So if there is any excuse, then that is that excuse. The Prophet woke up and said, this is an area where shaitan so and so is. We will move somewhere else. And he blamed it on shaitan. So shaitan kind of sort of helped them persist in that sleep. Or he caused them to forget in, in other hadith and other things, to forget uh, in, the, um, in Surah Al-Kahf, excuse me. وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانُ وَأَذْكُرَ That shaitan caused me to forget. So that tactic of shaitan even though 
it is effective in the sense that we don't do the good deed, we will not be held accountable and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook and forgive. Of course, the main tactic of shaitan is waswasa and that is to whisper. Waswasa means to whisper and the waswasa of shaitan it is to implant in our hearts an idea that should not be there. And this is a very, very evil tactic. Think about it. Our hearts are pure. We don't want to disobey Allah. Our hearts have been created to worship Allah. We want to pray, we want to enjoy religiosity. But shaitan comes and he throws something into our heart. And he causes us to think about something we never thought about doing. And he continues to persist in trying to push us to commit a sin. How evil is that? We won't even want to commit the sin. And this is generally the case, my dear brothers and sisters, when an evil thought comes and the thought even surprises us. Like, where did that come from? How, is, how am I thinking this? A'udhu billah. You yourself are disgusted by what you think you are thinking, but you think you are thinking it. It is not you who is thinking. It is shaitan who threw it into you. And that is why the existence of shaitan actually makes us realize that alhamdulillah, our hearts inshallah generally they're pure. And so we blame shaitan for the bulk of our evil. Isn't this a wisdom from Allah? When Yusuf alayhi salam, what happened happened and he was saying, Saved at the end, what did he say? It was shaitan who caused my brothers to do what they did. What a beautiful wisdom. And Ibn Qayyim mentions this, that we blame shaitan for the evil. It's not my brother who did this. Shaitan caused him to do it. What a beautiful tactic that you blame shaitan because he's worthy of being blamed. He is the one who did it. Then your anger is not at your Muslim brother. Your anger is not at somebody who did something. It's at shaitan who whispered them, who did the waswasa and so because of that your hearts can be pure towards your Muslim brothers and sisters and you can blame shaitan oh shaitan caused them to say that shaitan caused them to slip shaitan caused them to backbite they wouldn't do it otherwise and in fact most of the time this is the case and that is why it is of the greatest wisdoms of shaitan that uh, of the existence of shaitan that we blame him for the evil and not mankind and of course of the tactics of shaitan which really